It sounds kind of like you're, you know, you're grappling with a new identity. And I want to ask you this: like, obviously, you had so much time to philosophize in in prison, and you talked about the difficulties earlier in your life at looking in the mirror. When you look in the mirror now, and you think in your mind's eye, who is Michael Alleg? Do, it, it do you see yourself better. as a nightclub legend? Do you see yourself as a party monster? Do you see yourself as a convicted murderer? I mean, who do you see now when you look all in the, the mirror? All of the above. I mean, it's all a little bit of who I am. Every everything you mentioned is a little bit, but there's more. There's also, you know, there's also the humanitarian side of me that wants to help other people. That I mean, I think it's just it's too complicated to say that anybody's this one thing. We're all kind of like mosaics of all of the things that we've done, and or think about even. And so I'm all of those things, um, and I'm whatever I'm going to be. So you know, in the future, and I'm in control of that now. So I, I feel that I need my mosaic tiles are all sort of one color, and I need to kind of blend them into another color if I want the overall picture to be a picture that I'm happy with at the end. So I need to um, go consciously in that direction of helping people and doing things that will, you know, if there is a God that would make God happy at the end. Um, and um, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing that, you know, and that's really all I can do. Um, and in the process, if, um, you know, I have some fun, then that's great. But I, it's got to be a byproduct of, the, of the, what I'm doing. It can't be just fun for fun's sake like it used to be. Can I, can I ask you a difficult question? Well, I think you've, think you've done nothing but that. <laughs> I, you, you talk about having some fun along the way, uh, and you, you spoke about a period of sobriety. Is it something that you've left behind? Have you, have you Sobriety? Yeah, have you left behind drugs? Oh, I think it's, have I left have behind you, sobriety? Have, no, have you, have you, have you, um, you know, I'll ask you honestly, since prison, have you been able to leave behind the lifestyle that defined you before you went in? Yeah, like surprisingly easily, um, because I see it now... Uh, as the kind of pathetic lifestyle that it really is, and I didn't that I didn't see at the time. At the time, it seemed very glamorous and very exciting, and that's how it felt, you know. But the reality and the perception uh, are vastly different when you're not on drugs than when you are on drugs. And just like the crime, everything else back then was also kind of I don't want to say facade because you know I don't want to kill it for other people who are young and having fun. I don't want to like. Bust burst their bubble. If they're having fun, then that, that's great. You know, I, I don't, I don't. I'm not going to preach on that. Um, be, I, I'm far from the woman to preach, but um, it just it it looks so it looks really pathetic now, and it looks like we we were we you know we thought that we were so good that we that nobody could tell that we were masking that we were running away that we were, but it that's exactly what it looks like, and it looks like we we're doing it in the most obvious and. Um, uh, didn't, and um, di disastrous kind of way, destructive, self-destructive way. You know? what, what, is the, what does the future look like now for you? This is the last thing I wanted to chat about, Michael. What, what, is, what is your hope for your new life? I want to, and by this, I want you to talk to me about your art, um, the, the, the things that you see in your future. I mean, I, yeah, I, I need, I can, I, whatever the future helps me as far as like a job or a profession or anything, it's something, it's going to be something in the, creative in a creative field because it's kind of the only thing I know how to do um, so now it's kind of centering on painting and clothing design and stuff like that but whatever I do I've made a decision and I made this a long time ago that I would do a certain percentage of whatever I'm doing um, take a certain percentage of, of what I'm doing and um, use that to help other people um, and whether it be any of those things I was just telling you about um, and, and you know it's not something I I go on the camera and I say, well, now I'm going to go feed these children, you know, because that would be even worse. Um, it's really, I'm doing it for me and for the children or whoever, you know. Uh, um, and it's really got to be something that's done in private. It can't be something that's done. So they, people see like all of these other things, but they don't see those things because I don't want them to see it because it would cheapen it and it would... Um, make me feel kind of disgusted with myself and the whole purpose is to not feel disgusted with myself so I kind of have to do all that in private um, but whatever I do has to be a giant percentage of it has to be toward those things because otherwise it's kind of purposeless uh, it's not it's not purpose driven there, there there's really only one thing that means anything in life if you don't have any children if you have children then your children need something but if you don't have children then it's then a life that is spent not helping other people's lives get better is a huge waste and if we live in a country I live in a country I live in a city that has 
is the abundant with everything that we could possibly want, and living in a beautiful apartment, and in a fabulous city, and we have everything at our disposal, if that person isn't seekingly, seekingly, uh, actively seeking to help other people, then there's something wrong with them. And so um, if you have everything given to you, then you've got to spend all of your time helping other people.